I've read your Islamic, uh, your Islamic threat, myth, or reality, and uh, it would have been more appropriate to ask Rabbi Merkahani, but I prefer because you're here. I'm going to be asking you. You, uh, you exposed uh, how the average American was exposed to uh, Islam here. Uh, I would like you to comment on when somebody of the notoriety of Dr. Henry Kissinger on TV, alive with Ted Koppel, Ted Koppel says, now I can rest. This was in the aftermath of uh, the Gulf War. Now I can rest. We have pushed Iraq 100 years back. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's like when people used to ask me to explain Ronald Reagan's policy. So, you know, why the United States bombed Libya? I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, I mean, to put it, to put it as bluntly as I can, um, and because this is being videoed, I can't use the language that I used to use to describe both uh, Saddam Hussein and Hafez al-Assad years ago. Uh, but anybody who knows the track record of both of those rulers, at least in uh, Hafez al-Assad's younger years, he may have mellowed in his older years a bit, uh, and certainly Saddam's years, uh, these are not people that you would want to sit down and have a meal with and expect to be able to hold your meal down. Um, and the problem is, therefore, that for many people, uh, um, the way in which the Gulf War was constructed okay, was seen in terms of Saddam. In other words, just as Saddam rather brilliantly, in order to mobilize popular support, did not appeal to his personality and his track record, but appealed to the issues that were of concern to Muslims, in a way a reverse thing happened with regard to Iraq. The reaction with regard to Iraq was to see Iraq in terms of the leader. And indeed, that's the way in which many people approach countries. Most Americans approach Libya in terms of Gaddafi. You know, they approached Iran in terms of, you know, the leader becomes the symbol. And Saddam, and Saddam, the, you know, the, the, the person and the kinds of things Saddam said became the symbol. And the hardest thing, as you know, in terms of turning around a, a policy towards Iraq is, is to get people to distinguish between Saddam and the Iraqi people, and therefore with regard to the American response, or whatever response is made, to distinguish between the impact of that and who's it really going to affect. There's, there's no doubt about it. If you're talking about Henry Kissinger's response, well, how would I explain a lot of Henry Kissinger's response? Um, you know, I mean, Mr. Kissinger is a man who is, who is brilliant, but one of the lessons you learn is that just because people are brilliant doesn't mean that they're right. You know? Uh, 